Some of the biggest news in the TTRPG scene dropped yesterday, and of course, here I am, 24 hours late as usual, uh, covering this after it's relevant. In case you hadn't heard, Wizards of the Coast has bought D&D Beyond. Uh, well, this is an acquisition that is currently apparently underway. Both sides have agreed to it according to the press release that was dropped, also attached to the article. Uh, we're actually going to look over at the little blip that they put on the Wizards of the Coast website, give you guys an overview of that, and just let you guys know what I think is going to happen with this next evolution of D&D, whatever this next edition is. Uh, and those of you that are considering publishing over on the DMs Guild, making money as a homebrew content creator, well, well, I'll give you my perspective on that as I currently see it. So let's go look over at this article real quick. Big, big headline. Welcome to the party, D&D Beyond. Dropped April 13th, 2022. So Dungeons & Dragons levels up by acquiring the popular digital tool set. Dungeons & Dragons and D&D Beyond have always felt like a part of the same family. That's why we're excited to welcome everyone at D&D Beyond to formally join us at Wizards of the Coast. Bringing together two teams dedicated to continuing to make D&D easy to run and accessible to all. It's amazing what D&D Beyond has accomplished since its humble beginnings in 2017, and the D&D team has truly leveled up with this acquisition. With over 10 million users, millions of characters created, and millions of campaigns played, the team of 80 passionate creators across US and Europe have brought so much joy to D&D players across the world, including helping friends and family come together to play through a global pandemic. You're probably wondering what kind of change might happen as a result of these two teams coming together, so let's make this clear. We have no plans to stop supporting D&D Beyond. The purchases you've made, the characters you've created, and the campaigns you've run aren't going anywhere. This is an exciting time for all of us, and growing our team means great things to come. If there's one thing the D&D and D&D Beyond teams have in common, it's a desire to continue making our experience playing the world's greatest role-playing game even better. We'll have more to share with you later this year, so hone those perception checks and warm up your dice, digital and otherwise. In the meantime, join us in giving a hearty welcome to D&D Beyond to the Dungeons & Dragons family. Welcome to the party, pals. So this press release, I've highlighted some of the parts in here that I think were like, I mean, pretty big standouts here. Uh, number one, paying $146.3 million in cash. Like, I don't know, is Hasbro just going in there dropping like a big suitcase full of money? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I, I still think $146 million, like, holy crap, for such a massively, massively popular product. Um, massively popular product and just something that feels so integral to what it means to play D&D these days. So much so that, and, and rightfully so, over on Twitter, some people have been asking things about, well, now are we going to get players' handbooks retroactively added onto D&D Beyond like we've been asking for? You know, give us a QR code, let us scan in our barcode, give me a unique code somewhere in the player's handbook, whatever, that allows me to actually get that copy over on D&D Beyond, right? Well, this is pretty tricky, and I don't, I, I'm just giving you my, I, I guess my prediction here, I don't think that that's the direction that Wizards of the Coast is going to go in. Uh, what I really think that we're going to see is this new addition to D&D is probably going to move towards a more somewhat fully digital uh, format in a way. Having seen how hard it is to deal with printing issues, uh, distribution, everything like that, if you've got so many of your players that are just buying the digital asset, whatever, over on D&D Beyond, I, if they're trying to make it backwards compatible, I don't know that it's completely necessary for them to keep printing books. Now, I think that they still should. I think that they should make that material available to everybody. But having this over on D&D Beyond is immediately making me think, okay, like, in this, in this edition, we've had a clear, clear balance issue going on with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So if they release that digitally and they got enough feedback from players saying that, okay, this thing is outperforming like everything at the table. Can we please get some changes to help address the general power of it? Maybe we'll get something a little bit more immediate that way so that Watsi doesn't have to go and reprint a million books to do that. And, you know, they might be a little bit more willing to actually hop on top of making immediate changes. And these aren't just nerfs, right? We're talking about buffs, too. We could see, like, we've dealt with berserker barbarians just killing themselves using a core class feature. 
for this long in the game, and now we can see the potential of them moving in a different direction. Uh, I know some of the changes that they've talked about implementing either in Sage Advice columns or whatever, uh, just talks with Jeremy Crawford. We might see some of the UA implemented a little bit more quickly over on D&D Beyond. Uh, they, I mean, I have a hard time really picturing this being bad news for anyone that's a D&D fan right now. Because the reason why I say I think that they may be moving towards a more fully digital format is because of this line right here in the press release. With more than 80% of D&D fans having already played the game virtually in 2021, aided by online digital platforms such as D&D Beyond, this acquisition accelerates the game's ability to penetrate new markets, gather valuable consumer insights, and provide players with the best D&D experience ac across all platforms. What the last three years have told us is that, like, we can't always count on playing this game <laughs> in person, right? Like, I had campaigns just fumble because someone would get sick, and then we had to, like, wait for a month or two to figure out, like, okay, can we get everyone back together? We all get back to the table, and then suddenly someone else gets sick two weeks later, you know? So, with something like this, I can only see this being a net positive. If we see an actual, like, officially supported virtual tabletop on, like, Wizards of the Coast's behalf... I'm more in line to be, like, highly in favor of this. I think that we will probably see this new edition go into a more digital route. If that means that later on they'll be printing some of the core books, but that not being, like, the main way that they do it, maybe, like, once every two years we get, like, an update to the book, and then, you know, if you buy this print at this point, then you'll get any changes that happened. I, I, I'm not sure that that's exactly super consumer-friendly, but I, I'm just speculating here. But now, if you're a DMs Go creator, are there any concerns that you have to have about licensing or anything like that? Um, I've had some people in my community ask if I thought that this meant that maybe there would be some DMs Guild incorporation over on D&D Beyond. We currently don't really have any reason to think that that will be the case. Uh, I haven't heard anything on like any inside circles or anything that I'm a part of that makes me think that suddenly we're going to be able to add full classes over to D&D Beyond. I, it's just, I, I don't know. What I do think is I know that the DMs Guild CCA makes it to where WotC can just potentially make some of that stuff official. If you upload something, WotC might actually just add it to the game. It is a core part of the community content agreement. I don't want to give you hope that I don't really, I, I can't guarantee here. Uh, I will say I do know for sure of a, a third-party homebrewer who was reached out to by Fandom or D&D Beyond's representative in some kind um, and was asked to put their DMs Guild product over on D&D Beyond. Now, that hasn't moved forward as far as I'm aware, um, but from what I know, I am very much aware that D&D Beyond has been looking to bridge this gap. Uh, they've been looking to incorporate some products like that over on the site. So as to what this acquisition right here means... It might mean it's a little bit easier to deal with a licensing like that, but uh, that's just, again, speculation. That's about all we really know. Uh, but on this deal, it says that they were expecting to close the deal during the second or third quarter of 2022. So, like, now-ish? The transaction will be funded out of cash on hand and is expected to be immaterial to revenue and earnings per share in 2022. An accredited, I don't know, okay, lawyer word, uh, to earnings per share in fiscal year 2023 and beyond. The transaction has been approved by both Hasbro's and Fandom's board of directors. So this thing is happening. This is 100% going through. Uh, I'm personally really excited to see what they're going to make out of this. I think that this could be really, really a, a cool consumer-friendly move on Watsy's part. Um, even more so if they do start to integrate these things like you buy the book, you can get the thing over on D&D Beyond. Uh, this is going to be the way for them to be able to errata material without having if people having to go print out the errata, stick it in their player's handbook, whatever. It's, it's all digital. It's right there. I'm personally pretty excited about this move. So let me know what you all think down in the comment section below. Huge shout out to my Patreon sponsors. Thank you all so much for helping me keep the lights on around here and coffee in my blood. Y'all are absolute heroes. And hey, I've got the next couple days off, so I'm planning on doing some live streams, uh, doing a lot of class design stuff, prepping for some videos. So 
If that sounds like something that would interest you, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Go check out my Twitch and all that good stuff. Anyways, guys, I hope y'all are staying safe, staying healthy, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.